Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to Winter is Blooming, a Game of Thrones rewatch podcast by us, the Penny Bloom Podcast. Today, we are on our fifth penultimate episode, season five, episode nine, titled The Dance of Dragons. Quite the sad title after having watched the episode. It is written by D&D, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, and directed by David Nutter, the Nut Man. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since we've had the Nut Man, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, he, 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 he directed two in season two, two in season three, and the two he did in season three were The Red Wedding and uh, the finale of that season. He's taken a break until now. He's got two in season five, and then I'm pretty huh. sure he has two more <laughs> in season eight. Okay, so, so uh, he likes the hard hitting ones. It seems yes, um, the ones that that hit you. He might have three in hard. season eight. Actually, yes, he directed half of season eight with the first two episodes of the season, and then what is pretty unanimous, unanimously considered the worst episode of the show, season eight, episode four. <laughs> um, ah, okay. So you know he's he's hit the highest of highs and he's hit mm-hmm. the lowest of lows with the Red Wedding and the Last of the Stars. So That's okay. uh, you know good. Good track record on the, on oh, the yeah. nut man. I am Colton Robertson. I'm joined by Joseph George. Oh. What's up, homie? <laughs> oh, what up? What up? Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And like I said, we're almost done with season five, man. If I mean, shit, we started this almost a year ago now. Our first episode was Halloween Dang. of 2022. Dang, so man. We're uh, we're oh. getting up there. Uh, the pretty season five much, finale. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Pretty the season five episode. finale will actually be like the year. The year anniversary of the of winter is Whoa. blooming, you know. I mean, it'll be October thirtieth, but you know, uh, yeah, close as you can get on a Monday. I guess but, that makes uh, sense. Yeah, fifty two weeks. That's a year. We got five seasons of ten episodes. Yeah, you know, we there took a go. couple that's, weeks yeah. off somewhere in there. That's so, true. like, uh, that's yeah. true. Boom, worked out. Nice, nice worked and round out. like that. I like that yeah. stuff. But uh, First, yeah, man, how you feeling about this penultimate episode? Ah, uh, well. After what you know, having the House of the Dragon knowledge, this one was kind of cool to hear some like right. some deeper lore and and like and like maybe some some stuff that's going to come up or whatever. Because I know I it reminded me I'm I'm looking at the the fandom page and it's like spoiler warning for House of the Dragon and I was like whoa I've never seen that before you know mm-hmm. like uh, usually there's no spoiler warning whatsoever because you're getting the whole episode breakdown yeah, spoilers like, for like, future yeah. seasons of House of yeah. the Dragon so, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, it was it, it, this all just kind of sucks, you know. Like <laughs> know, there's, there's there's not many good things that there's happen like, here. There's like one good thing, and it's when Daenerys like flies away, mm, and that's mm-hmm. like it. Yeah, but even that is like out of necessity because there's just a yeah, slaughter. It's literally, she needs to survive, and yeah. like Dro- if Drogon did not pop up there, that whole crew's dead. You know, like. Everyone, I mean, maybe they were holding off pretty well, but uh, I mean, whenever they literally heard just a single screech, a single dragon's roar, everyone was like, "All right, time out." What well, the game has changed now. Um, we are running, but yeah, this this episode, I mean, it was it was fantastic. I'm not I'm not gonna say like the episode sucked, but everything that happened kind of sucked. Um, yeah, no, like you, it's it's. It's undeniably well done, you know. There's, there's no oh. question about that. But uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that happens where you're like, ah, this, and it happens over the next two episodes, where it's just like there are a couple good things oh, over the next couple God. episodes, but uh, it's mostly just like this shit happens, this shit happens, this shit happens. Oh, this, this happens. That's cool. This shit happens. This shit, ha-. you know, like it's just, uh, it's just a series mm. of terrible events for the people we like, but. Uh, Let's get it rolling at mm-hmm. the wall, wherein Jon mm. Snow, Tormund, and the surviving few thousand wildlings from Hardhome arrive. And before the gates of Castle Black can open, there's a tense standoff. 
between the the Night's Watchmen atop the wall and Jon Snow. The shot mm. looking down over Alistair's shoulder as Jon steps forward. I was like, okay, yeah, 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 dude. Um, there were there were some shots, shots, bro. In this, this one. is a like, and not like this one was cool because it's like a massive landscape. There are a few just really interesting angles and shot composition like, ideas that, yeah man there's there, some is it is that this ep- the jamie the yeah. like in in the water or like in dorn just like the super the dome like i know it's like yeah he's like, like it's like under up. him and he's yeah. just like, yeah man oh i was like God. that was fucking like, awesome dude uh, yeah they were it's this one yeah they were they were in their bag this episode and that little standoff i was wondering like why does thorn do that and it's maybe just like hey if i wanted to I could have trapped you out here and all of you would have died. Like, no, and that's like, something you kind of forget is that John yeah. is trusting Alistair Thorne like fucking crazy with this. Like, so that's, I don't know if it, did they know they were going to kill him? Like, I'm assuming it wasn't like, oh, he's back and he did it and all the wildlings are here. Let's fucking kill him. It's probably like while he's gone, they're like, holy fuck, I can't believe he's doing this. When he gets back here, we're going to kill this guy, you know, sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, but then in doing that, they do let all the wildlings through. Um, you know, if they, if they did just want to kill them and their mortal enemies. Just leave them outside. Yeah. I mean, not obviously, obviously the show. Dramatically he dramatically enticing, yeah, though. He needs to be resurrected uh, no, but, uh, and all, but, you know. No, I'm with you. I think that uh, there's... There's a chance that they didn't discuss this mutiny in full mm. until he got back because... He's going north of the wall. There's a chance the north does it for them. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, there's, there's a chance that he doesn't come back anyway. So, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he comes back and they're like, all right, well, now we got to, you know, maybe they were still holding out hope that he was trying to turn the tables on the wildlings or something. Mm-hmm. And because mm-hmm. that's what Ollie said a couple episodes ago. He's like, he's playing, he's playing them, right? Like, he's, he's going to trap that's them true. on ships and burn yeah. them. Like, that's what's going to happen, right? Um, Mm. So like maybe that was kind of the idea, and then when he actually shows up, they're like, "Oh, okay." So this guy is actually. He's actually I love doing the it, line man. Alistair delivers there, Dude. where he's like, "You have a good heart; it'll get us all killed." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, that's hard." That was a dope ass line. Like, uh, so you know he's doing the right thing, mm-hmm. Alistair. You know he's doing the right thing, but I mean they they do got some bad history. It, it is <laughs> under. You know, it's they, fascinating that it's like a self-preservation thing that line kind of present presents itself mm-hmm. as. It's like they they understand that's that what is right for the wildling people is letting them through the wall. Mm-hmm. But they think that the wildlings being on this side of the wall at all is just means the death of them. Like they are going to they're going to die because mm-hmm. shit's gonna pop off, you know and. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I wonder. I wonder if uh, if Alistair tagged along to Hard Home, if he thinks a little differently. You know, yeah. If I think teased, he has to. Yeah, like I. I, I mean, think the key is that Alistair. He was not at the Fist of the First Men. Mm-hmm. When okay, when the yeah. wild when the uh, uh, whites fought the Night's Watchmen, he was not at Hard Home. The only dead man who he's seen come to life is the one who infiltrated Castle Black. And even that one, was there not a point where he was sent south at one point to go uh, to go deal with something? Like, I, he might have never seen any of these guys and only heard I stories. I don't think he did, because the one guy that was in Castle Black, that was just uh, with Lord Commander Mormont, right? Because John was just saving him. Well... I guess they well, burned, yeah, they like publicly you know, and they made it like him, a though. public thing. Yeah, I yeah. guess true. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's I feel like everyone in Castle Black like believes. Like I don't think there's anyone that's like, oh no, this shit's still fake. Oh, no, know? never mind. Um, Thorn was sent to King's Landing with the frozen hand of a white to warn ah, Joffrey. Okay. Wow. So he's just a complete and utter fuck. That's all it is. And frankly, you mm-hmm. got to think there's some sort of jealousy thing going on. Um, he lost his he election wish- to a king. He also just wishes he was Jon Snow. Um, That's true. I mean, um, don't we all? You know? Yeah, I mean, like, fuck. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I'm assuming there's got to be a little bit of that. You know, he's the young guy. He's still mm-hmm. got it. And Alistair Thorne's still got it. We've seen him go in a few times, but it's That's like, true. you know, he's pa- he's past his prime. You know, uh, Alistair Thorne mm-hmm. at Jon Snow's age was probably that guy, too. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, that was it was an awesome opening to the episode. Um, I loved I loved the visual cues we were getting. I loved one one coming through Castle Black and everyone being like, "Oh my fucking oh, god!" Holy shit! It That's... never gets old seeing people like see the mystical parts of Game of Thrones mm-hmm. for the first time. Like whenever mm-hmm. Tyrion saw oh. Drogon flying overhead and he was just like, "Oh, yeah!" Like it's a different kind of like epicness. Yeah. But you know, yeah. these dudes seeing a giant, it's like, yeah. "Whoa!" It's in the same vein. For sure, no. It, yeah, that's that. Uh, that will never get old. That's such a good trope, just to see like someone's mind just being absolutely blown. Like what everything knew you knew wrong. is now different. Yeah, you know, like, sort like, of what thing. The hell, that's a thing. You know, <laughs> that's that's a real thing. Am I? Am I? Am I for this real? exists? Yeah, I don't know. I might be like, damn. Like after seeing that, I wonder if that changed anyone's minds at all. You know, like being like, well, maybe there is some legitimacy to what this dude's doing here. I don't know. Like, um. Giants could be pretty useful, you know. I don't know, and uh, but not not really against what's coming is the thing. Nothing's really mm. useful whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, this one was just rough, rough to to know what's coming, and then to like to see like that Alistair line of like, yeah, you got a good heart, but it'll get us killed. Too bad I'll kill you next episode, and then literally stabbing him in the heart. Mm-hmm. By the way, oh yeah, you got a you got a good heart. It, It'll oh, get you killed. Um, yeah. yeah that's and then yeah. the, I don't know, this little goodbye with Sam, basically, that's not even meant to be a real goodbye, just like a temporary one, but it ends well, up being, well, I guess it is still, you know, he does come back, but. Well, there's a few been. things that I hadn't considered. The, the, this, for those who are listening, full transparency, me and Joe are recording this one in the finale back to back. We watched them both. As you should with the season five penultimate and finale, because they play as a two parter. There is so much that happens in these storylines that is one right after the other. So the goodbye with Sam and John isn't till next episode. Um, Whoops. Yeah. Um, no. And there's a few things like that. Marcella doesn't die till next episode. That's that's also something that I, that was the reason I thought there was like a pause is because there's literally a full fucking I episode. See. In okay. Um, the pause was literally me just hitting. Yep. Next episode. Yeah. Next uh, episode. But yeah, no. I, there is a there's a brief reunion between Sam and him here though, where uh, John's like, I fucking failed them, and everyone here hates me because you know shit went bad and people died saving these people, and you know Sam's like, you didn't fail him, you didn't fail him, you didn't fail her. You know, every one of these people is alive because of and you voice, yeah. and no one else. Yeah. That's. What a hype man. You know, what a friend. Like I love Sam, just man. A, an absolute G. Yeah, just any time Sam and John are together, it's like it's like one of the only it's Tyrion and Varys, it's John and Sam, like these friends who get together mm-hmm. and just like get to get to bro out for a second. It's the best. <laughs> I love that yeah. stuff. Because mm-hmm. uh, there's not a lot of those. You know, I think you got Desan- uh, Daenerys and Masande on the on the Marine side of things a little bit, but beyond that, you know, there's not a lot of just down ass homies, you know. Um, yeah, no. Nah. Jamie and Braun, maybe a little bit. Um, Tyrion and Braun more so, but Jamie yeah. and Braun are getting there. They're getting there. I think they're, they're more of just like a like just fucking battle. They're born yeah. of necessity, you know. Yeah, they just they'll have some cool battles eventually together mm-hmm. uh, and such. But but yeah, that's uh, I guess I was thinking a little more happened at the wall. Um, but but that is it. I no, guess, yeah, it's huh? pretty brief and uh. So for a penultimate episode, this one actually is rather reserved, and that's because mm. I think episode eight, Hard Home, is the de facto penultimate yeah. episode, and nine yeah, and I ten guess, kind of play as a two parter. I guess the the Dragon Pits, you could consider that as like a. I mean, it probably. I mean, shit, it was a big, big chunk of the episode. Like it might have been half. Oh, no, it was the last. It was a fifty-two minute episode, and we get to Marine at thirty-five minutes. Okay, so so, so it's almost about there. twenty minutes, almost um, twenty minutes yeah. of the episode, I mean, which is a big chunk. I'd say that could that could be um, considered the the penultimate. You know, kind of. Oh, it, it's definitely supposed to be like the penultimate but, moment. Is that like she got she mounted that dragon and flew away? Like that's pretty. 
Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. It's just that and- now that we've seen House of the Dragon and her do this a lot more, mm-hmm. you know, this one doesn't have quite the grandiosity as mm-hmm. it used to uh, on yeah. the first watch. Um, yeah. After you see a dragon eat another dragon and a human, it's kind of like you uh, take riding a dragon for, for granted now, but that was... This was huge. This was like, oh my god, she's she's riding that thing, you know? Yeah, I remember like, when she like started climbing on it the first time I was, I was like, oh, no, but we'll get there. Um, we are next in the north, where during the night at Stannis Baratheon's army camp, Melisandre gazes intently into the flames of her tense brazier, hoping to receive visions from the Lord of Light. And in the distance, several tents burst into flames. She's like, did I do that? And then uh, one's horse, uh, one horse comes screaming on, you know, Covered in flame. I'm kind of like, y'all, what'd you do to my fucking horse here, bro? Um, <laughs> Rams, that's he's he just doesn't give a fuck. That those screams of the the horse, like yeah, I did not this, need this to episode. That. Probably has my least favorite sound design of any yeah. episode ever. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, but um, in a good like it, it's good. It Don't get me wrong, it's well done. Feel, I fucking hate awesome. hearing it. Yeah. yeah, I, 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 it's, it's a. It's exceptional. It is very well done. I cannot stand listening to it. There are multiple times where, like, I just kind of, like, tune out. Like, I'm like, oh, God. you know, like, I'm like, I don't like that sound. But uh, this is one I of them. I did turn it down. This uh, I don't usually do that. I did, I do. like, cu- I do knock every it down time. a few notches during, um, during, yeah, what's coming up. But, yeah. But yeah, during the night, Ramsay Bolton and twenty men raided twenty men raided the camp, burning much of their food and heavy siege weapons. And hundreds of horses also died in the fire. And Davos notes that their situation is now fucking awful. Uh, they don't have enough food to make the march back to Castle Black or advance to Winterfell. And without their siege weapons, they have little chance of storming the castle to take its food supplies anyway. And Stannis asks how this could happen, and Davos insists that the Boltons know the North's terrain better than they do, so it was easy for a raiding party to sneak into camp. And Stannis suggests that the Watchmen were either collaborating with the enemy or simply not attentive enough at their post to allow such a disaster. Either way, he orders them dead. Uh, Dude, the way he said it, though, he was like, they're either stupid or traitors. Find out the truth and then hang them. You know, it's like, doesn't matter if they are just incompetent. Rowan Still full, hang them. Yeah, like <laughs> Rowan full Ace Rothstein on it. Either you were too dumb to see what was happening or you were in on it. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh either Literally. way, you're out of here. Yeah. Um and that they weren't. They weren't in on it. It's just mm-hmm. Ramsey's that dude. I mean, hate Ramsey, but this pretty good idea here. You know, bro's got I mean, bro's got the shit figured out when it comes to and, militarily, you know, mm-hmm. breaking mm-hmm. rules of war. You know, I yeah. doubt this is something that they're like, yeah, we do this, you know, like in Westeros. I'm assuming mm, this is like a fair. It, like little This is probably like, yeah. oh that that piece of shit. You know, that little motherfucker. That sort of but thing. I mean, um took out everything important and then now knows how big their army is, you know, mm-hmm. like just right away. And they're like, yeah we're gonna crush you know th- th- it was like no like just 20 men good old ramsey's just a fucking menace dude dude is, dude is, a, dude is fucked bro dude. is fucked in the head but yeah so santa says to slaughter the dead horses for meat which should also buy them a little time on the food side and stannis's demeanor becomes increasingly grave and uh, as he believes there's only one course of action to take he starts by ordering davos to return to castle black he's like you cannot be here as you will die with her or you'll do everything you can to prevent it from happening. And I can't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, so return to Castle Black, ask for more supplies from Jon Snow. And Davos is like, you could send literally anyone in the camp to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Why the fuck would you send me? He's like, I didn't hire you as hand of the king for your military expertise. It's because you fucking sell. You can sell him on coming down and helping. So go ahead and do that. Um, don't come back empty-handed. Eesh. Eesh. Yeah, this this was just to get him out, you know? Oh, yeah. Because like, he, he goes. Stannis is like, well, we're going. You know, let's let's roll. No no waiting for supplies, no, none of that. It's just like, I know what I'm about to do. This guy would prevent it at all costs. Mm-hmm. He, he loves my it. daughter more than I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not good. What I I think my favorite scene of the episode is coming up. 
like it's that. It's the like, next one. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to go against this one, man. man um, it's short but sweet. And it's, yeah, it's like Davos the, visiting the tent of Shireen to say goodbye. Mm. You know, she's enjoying, enjoying a good book by uh, Grand Maester Munken about the Dance of Dragons, a major mm-hmm. civil war in the history of the Seven Kingdoms. And they share a laugh about how a knight tried to kill the dragon Vagar by sneaking up on it with a mirrored shield. Uh, but it didn't fool the dragon, who promptly roasted the knight. Um, did they say the name of the knight? I all? believe they did. Um, hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if we, if it's like a known character, or if it's just some like. I'm I'm betting it's just guy. some fucking guy. I doubt yeah. we ever even see something like this. I think it'd be funny if we did. Though. Be, like I hope we do. So uh, that'd be just just a little sneak up like Medusa tactic sort of thing, mm-hmm. and then just. Just melts the shield completely and just the dude's just. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, uh, no, I, uh, I also love this little bit of like George R. R. Martin Game of Thrones humor, too, where, uh, mm. you know, she's like, you know what he did? It's like, probably roasted him alive. And they, they like laugh together, you know, like it's, it's funny, you know, but it's, it's also not funny because it's like someone got burnt to death by a dragon, but like that's, that's also kind of funny. I don't know. It's, it's a good. <laughs> It's a good little moment for them to have before the end here. Mm-hmm. But uh, Davos gives her a gift, a wooden Aww. stag figuring he has been carving as a present. And she asks why he has been so nice to her. And he explains that he felt bad that his son Mathos also always insisted that his father learn to read and he never did. Mathos died in war and by teaching Davos to read, Shireen helped him fulfill his son's wishes. And she tells him to make... She tells him to make him a, or make her a uh, a doe to go with it, uh, so he ha- so he can never so he's never alone. Mm. Man, yeah, mm. no, <clears throat> no, no, uh, uh-uh. and like Dava, like I don't know if Dav did Davos put it together that like she was going to be sacrificed, you know, because or do you think it was just like there's a high likelihood. That like she just might not make it out of this. Like they're they might go siege. They're like a lot of just bad shits happening. Like I just I'm leaving. And I'm gonna like just kind of cover all my bases here. I uh, I actually don't think he. I mean I, I I it's probably a possibility in his mind. You know, whenever uh, Melisandre returns to Castle Black in the next episode, she's like uh, he he he's like Shireen, the princess. Like like. If she's returning alone, that means terrible. But, like, it doesn't necessarily indicate to me that he thinks something mm. terrible is about to happen. I think it's just that he wants to provide her comfort in a situation where she's not going to have a lot in the coming mm. days and weeks. I thought I remembered, like, uh, it was like, Stannis and Davos were talking, and they were like, all right, yeah, we're screwed. Like, that, that this is this is just fucked. And then he's like, I, I don't... Like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, what do we do? And then he, Stannis looks at Melisandre. Um, and then Davos, like, sees him look at Melisandre and is like, like, no, she's not the answer, dude. You know, like, sort of thing. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I feel like I remember something like that. And then, yeah, I mean, that might have happened earlier in their little conversation, uh, where he sends him off. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, I kind of had all- the inclination that he did kind of know here. Like, he, he might have pieced it together. Um, mm. but I, he, he also is just a really nice, genuine dude and, you know, they just have a really good relationship. So this could just be, he's leaving for Castle Black. He wants to just say goodbye and, and, and give a little gift. Um, yeah, for me, uh, understanding Davos as a character, I think that if he even had the slightest idea that that might be where this was headed, he would not have going. left. That's yeah, true. Like that's, that's, that's what I true. think. Like, I didn't uh, think of that part. Yeah. That's, that's 100% true. Yeah, I don't um, think he would have left if he thought it was even a possibility. And maybe that just shows how much trust he has in Stannis. Like, maybe it does mm-hmm. occur to him, but he doesn't think Stannis would ever stoop to that. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, like, it, and I think that's a possibility. So, um, th- yeah. th- I think that's the danger there. I don't think he necessarily thinks Shireen is a goner. I think mm-hmm. it's just that, you know, Shireen's going to be in a terrible situation. You know, he says to Stannis, like, I'm going back to Castle Black. Let me take Selyse and Shireen. You know, mm, let, let me take that's them. True. This yeah. is no place for them. And he's like, no, my family stays with me. And he's like, okay, let me take Shireen at least. You know, like, uh, this is no yeah. place for a little girl. 
uh, no, they, my uh, family stays with me. Um, damn. Found the name of the mirrored shield guy, by the uh, way. Sir Byron Swan. Um, I don't Byron think. Swan. Does not say. I, I Googled it as well. Just pops up for this episode. Oh, yeah, maybe so. maybe season two. Maybe yeah. we get a little something in season be two. Be pretty funny. Yeah, um, it'll be pretty funny. But... We'll, we'll keep an eye out for Byron Swan then. Though. <laughs> yeah. be, if we hear that name, we know what's coming. <laughs> you like, know, yeah, that's, that's Byron Swan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my favorite character in the entire show if he comes up for a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, uh, this, this, yeah, no, this uh, was my scene, though. I think I, I will lock it in. This uh, Okay, that makes me little... comfortable locking in my scene mm-hmm. as well. You know, I think to spread the love a little bit, I'll go ahead and pick a later one. But uh, yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were two scenes in this episode that were so easily top two, I thought. And mm-hmm. uh, But sometime after Davos leaves, Stannis visits Shireen himself. And visibly shaken by trying to speak to her kindly, he asks about her reading. She explains that the Dance of Dragons was a great civil war between Rhaenyra and and her half-brother, Aegon, each of whom thought they deserved to sit on the Iron Throne. I was like, yeah, that's a pretty accurate assessment of the situation as we know it. Mm-hmm. Um, going into season two, that's like the end of season yeah, one. Yeah, like, it, it's and, about to start. Like, yeah. it's like, this is just the beginnings of mm-hmm. the Civil War. Um, yeah, here. the great lords of the Seven Kingdoms each declared for one or the other. I thought of the I thought of the scene of Rhaenyra standing on the hillside getting dubbed. You know, like I, I this this made me want to rewatch Come House on. of the Dragon for yeah. really fucking bad. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, it did. But, no, this uh, this was it was really nice hearing it. And like first watch, you're just like, this is just some random exposition bullshit to yeah. like to have like a father daughter moment before he sacrifices her, you know? It's like <laughs> yeah, rough. And then now it's uh, he wrote a whole book on it, and uh, it's now a, a multi-season television show, yep. which is hilarious. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, the great lords of the Seven Kingdoms each declared for one or the other, and uh, brother fought brother, dragon fought dragon in a devastating war, and it was a disaster for the House Targaryen, who never truly recovered. And Stannis mm-hmm. asks who she would have chosen, Rhaenyra or Aegon? And she says she wouldn't have chosen either. It was all the choosing sides that plunged Westeros into civil war. Let's fucking go, Shireen. She's the smartest person in this fucking room, dude. In this yeah, pool man. in the north. Other yeah. than Jon Snow and Sam, probably. You know, like, yeah, she's, exactly. a, she's fucking... She's, she's got so, a head on her shoulders, man. Ah, she's so mature. Like, it's crazy. And I almost I almost chose that for my line um, of the episode. Just because, I don't mm. know. Uh, I, I just kind of... I hate the divide in anything. Like, it's just labels, you know, that... that mm-hmm. Choose a side, and then that's that's how you think, and you're supposed to, you know, right. you can't make any decisions on your own, and it's coming from a, however old she is, you know, a little girl, uh, which is crazy. But I, I did give her the the character nod. Um, I gave her the he, performance. Oh, let's go. She'll yeah. get both. Um, yeah. because I mean, terrible performance to have to put on, but a fantastic Ooh. one. That's for sure. Oof, yeah, uh, Carrie Ingram as Shireen Baratheon. Nice. I went with her. It's mostly for yeah. the next scene. Uh brutal uh brutal performance you are forced to put on in that moment uh God. but uh yeah and in, in response to this wizened beyond her years response about not choosing stannis gravely responds that sometimes the world forces a man to choose even if he doesn't want to but if he stays true to himself he knows what he must do and then it really isn't a choice at all hmm. even if he hates doing it and shireen says it's all right I want to help you. How can I help? God damn it, dude. No. And, like, the thing is, is what Stannis is saying is, like, making sense. But you know that he's trying to justify what he's about to do. Yeah. So it loses all of its, like, credibility completely. Yeah, it's like, no, because, like, Stannis has a good, uh, he does have a good point. At some point, there, like, no matter who you are, if you want to mm-hmm. avoid sides, you can avoid sides. But at some point, there's usually there's usually something someone does that makes you go, Okay, I ain't with you. You know, mm-hmm. like that's uh, and that's yeah. sometimes the world does force you to choose. But uh he's choosing, you know, himself. He's choosing the Lord of Light and he's choosing to push forward to uh Winterfell at any cost. Um mm. and uh you know, she doesn't care and asks if there is any way she can help, and he says that there is. Shireen insists that she wants to, because she is Princess Shireen of the House Baratheon, his daughter. They hug, and he embraces her tightly, and Stannis whispers, Forgive me. And later on, 
Shireen mm-hmm. exits her tent as well and sees all of the soldiers gathered around and asks where her father is. Coming to the front of the assembly, she sees Melisandre in front of a wooden pyre with a large stake in the middle. And it's at this moment Shireen knew something was not okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. She begins to shout for her father, but is grabbed by soldiers who drag her to the pyre and tie her to the stake. And Melisandre soothingly tries to calm her by saying that it will all be over soon. And Shireen's cries ring out through the camp, but no one intervenes. Stannis and Selyse then peer in the crowd, but Shireen sees them and begs them for help, beginning with her father, knowing her mom won't do anything, but eventually switches to her mother Yeah, as a last I mean, resort. It's, you know, it, and that's that was really interesting to me because this this whole rewatch, I'm noticing that, like, Stannis is the only one who has any kind of feelings for Shireen. And, you know, the mother hates Shireen. You know, it's like, I, like it, she doesn't really fuck with Shireen whatsoever. But mm. it's just that, I don't know, like, Stannis, he's already come to terms with it. You know, he's, he's, he's the king. He's doing what he has to do. That's how he's justifying it. But it's a, mo- it's a mother, right? That, you know, seeing mm-hmm. a little girl die. And that's like, in that moment, you know, she's very devout devout oh yeah devout. she's devout. very devout devoted to Melisandre. Devout. Yeah. yeah yeah um very very and and seeing her like break here just made it even harder you know oh, it dude, was like, this was uh this was it. the hardest i've cried on our rewatch like dude. we've done the we've done the red wedding we've done ned's death we've done all this shit this was the hardest one for me um Mostly because, again, it's the weight of having approached it the way we've approached it. This this long-standing relationship with the characters that we've formed instead of, you know, the first time I watched the show probably took me a couple months. You know, it, it, it probably yeah. took me two months. We've had this character in our lives on this rewatch for like seven or eight months. You know, oh, like... uh yeah. Yeah, like that's a that's a long standing relationship we're forming with some of the characters and uh man does it uh does it shake you to your fucking core. Yeah, she she appeared in season she first appeared in season 3 episode 4. Wow. So, you know, we were we were a ways into it, you know. Um mm-hmm. but one of the good ones though is the thing is that there's nothing bad about Shireen whatsoever. So no, it's like Yeah, not even a it, little bit. And it's, she's so innocent. She's 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 a young girl who has nothing to do with this. There is nothing she can do in this moment. You know, Melisandre begins praying and announces that they offer up the life of this girl to the Lord of Light and sets the pyre on fire. And as she explained to Stannis before, she believes that sacrificing Shireen's life, which contains the power of King's blood, will gain the favor of the Lord of Light who in return will aid them in their time of need by lifting the blizzard. And Stannis believes that if they do nothing, they will remain snowbound and all starve to death anyway. And uh, Shireen continues to repeatedly cry, Mother, please, Father, please. And eventually, even Solis, who has had a cold and non-existent relationship with their daughter, suddenly breaks and rushes forward, begging that they cannot go through with this. Soldiers restrain her, and she sinks to the ground, crying in despair. And Shireen's cries become even more frightened, even more painful. And they watch as the flames consume her. And then the screams of Shireen stop. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, no. I, I I knew it was coming full well. Oh, dude, it sucks, and... bro. Like, it is not good. I wasn't even, like, I told you this is the hardest I've cried. I was literally sitting here like this on my fucking phone. Just <laughs> <laughs> like trying to, I'm just trying to get out of it as fast I'm just as you can. listening to what yeah what's happening and i'm like God, fucking damn it you know yeah. i'm like i'm not even reading the words on my screen i'm just looking at my phone like God, mm-hmm. like uh, i i had my my volume up you know where i usually have it and i halved it and then i'm like ah i'll have it again um <laughs> literally yeah i was like i didn't mute it because i'm like i i want to i wanna, gotta you gotta get the moment it you sucks know? You but like you got it you gotta go through it you know and god uh, man yeah it's just yeah, a death no, that, that, shit's, that uh, will never get easier, you know, like uh, on no matter how many rewatches you do, it probably only gets harder, actually. No, yeah, like this you is uh, <laughs> like this is yeah. a moment that like when I was watching it with Emily for the first time, I was like, we got to that scene and I was like, boop, boop, boop. I fast forwarded through it. I pressed pause. I looked at her. I said, he burned his daughter alive. Um, And uh, she. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and she was like, what the fuck? I was like, it would be a lot worse if you knew, if you saw what happened. You, you know, I, no, I know how you handle these things. <laughs> I cannot show that to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 probably a good decision there. I, if I could go back in time and fast forward, you know, for the first time. Right. I, think oh, I, I remember, ah, oh, dude, the first time you watched this, I remember just being like, like, wait, wait, what? This like, show wait, like, is what? just fucking sick sometimes, dude. Like, uh, in the end of season, we've had some hopeless, hopeless fucking endings, dude, uh, to seasons. You know, we've had the Red Wedding, we've had Ned's head getting cut off. You know, we, we've had all, we've had Egret dying at the end of a season, mm-hmm. you know, John and his love, you know, all of that. Nothing is so hopeless as the end of season five, dude. Um, the, the, everywhere the we check King, in, like the everywhere. Night King raising the dead at the end, they're like, okay, well, that we're fucked. That's, that's a wrap over there. You know, we see this Shireen burning at the stake. You know, we eventually see, uh, Marcella die of poison. We see Jon Snow get fucking murdered. You know, like it's, uh, there's, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. nothing good that happens at the end of the season, save for like two little itty bitty things, which I would say are Danny flying on a dragon and Sansa escaping Winterfell, which is pretty big for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that all that, that happens next episode, so we'll get to that. But uh, mm-hmm. we're next in the Water Gardens, uh, uh, where okay, at least yeah. we're past it. <laughs> a little reprieve, you know. You know, next episode won't be much of a reprieve, but for now, mm-hmm. it's a reprieve. Uh, yeah. In the water gardens, where uh, that cool ass shot of Jamie walking in. Oh, gorgeous, you know? dude! Fucking oh. loved it. I was like, immediately, I was like, someone has a keen visual sense someone in the cinematographer's here. chair. Yeah, some, uh, someone was cooking here. Yeah, um, someone, someone cooked here. Yeah, um, who, who was the cinematographer for this one? Robert you know? McLaughlin, um, yeah, who he? is David Nutter's like. Uh, the nut man's right hand man. Yes, he he did do Left the nut, right nut. Let's go. Yeah, they they're a good pair. Because uh, this, I don't know, this was noticeably like many times was like, oh wow, that was done very beautiful. Like the wall, that shot of like looking over the shoulder of Alice, or like you said, that one and 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 this one were probably the most memorable ones. But I feel mm-hmm. like there were a lot of just nonchalant shots that were like, oh wow, that's they didn't need to do that, but it looks looks really good um and dorn always just looks good like in the water gardens like i yeah i love well, the set design here was fucking beautiful even when it wasn't that upward shot like when them mm-hmm. that room they're sitting in is fucking gorgeous yeah. like the gold gilding sort of walls mm-hmm. they've got going on and the arches for the doorways like it's mm-hmm. just uh oh yeah their attention to detail on this show is never never that's really a real missed. building like if that's just like a Oh, that's right. Like, if this yeah. is just an actual structure. Yeah, um, or if they, they built that. Um, that's a good question. It might be a real fucking room. Because um, that, do you think that shot of Jamie with the, like, looking up is CG? Or do you think it's just, they really did that? Yeah, maybe yeah. they did actually have a room that they found that they could film this in. That's a good, that's a good point. I hadn't really oh. considered that. It was, like, the cameraman, like, on, like, a lane on his back, like, on, like, a something with wheels, just, like... Yeah, my money, my money's on some sort of dolly yeah. that the camera was hooked That's, up to. Oh, yeah, just, like, with him. just angled uh, straight up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Jamie is escorted into these the main apartments of the Water Gardens by Areo Hota to, re- to be received mm-hmm. by Prince Doran Martell and a luxurious Solar, along with Elaria Sand, Doran Suntrastain, and Jamie's niece mm. quote unquote Marcella. <laughs> and uh I was very close with going with Doran Doran Martell for my Dude, favorite sick. character of the episode. Dude's dope. Love Doran. Uh Dude. No, this this was really sick. I I don't know. I don't really remember a whole lot going on with Doran. Um but this one was like it felt like he was planting the seeds for so much here. Mm. Like uh just like if we want this you know, alliance to last. We got it. We got to. You know, we get, we can't just kill each other. We don't want a war. I don't. I don't want to go into that. And I'm like, yeah, man, this, this dude's spitting here. Like he's like, I I like me some some Doran. Um, and yeah, uh, there are a few lines that were almost chosen as well here. He some like mob lines almost. You know, like uh, bit, yeah. like what was the? Oh, what did he say? Like, oh yeah. Like you mean a lot to me, and you're you're or you're the mother of you know 
three of my I, whatever. I was, yeah. You know, but like I want you to live a very long, fruitful life. But you do that again, you know, or whatever. You you, yeah. You won't. Like, and it, she yeah, was, was like, I was like, oh my God. Like, this dude is like, he knows he knows what he's, he's about. He's a know? diplomat, man. He's a he's a Martel, you know? Like that's the thing. He's yeah. he's Oberyn's brother. And mm-hmm. it seems that way. You know? Like that's uh he doesn't fuck as much, you know. It doesn't seem yeah. like it. Maybe he's I don't know, maybe he's just past his prime. Maybe he did. I don't know. Um but I don't think I don't you know, maybe Tyrion and Oberyn. I don't know who fucks more in the show. Mm. I'd say mm. probably probably Oberyn. Um, it's like all he's doing down there, probably in Dorne. Yeah. Oberyn's you know? got like twelve fucking kids, you know. So yeah. Tyrion, you know, Tyrion yeah. with being a childless man, you true. Know, either he's just got an insane pull-out game or great or record. Yeah, yeah, he's got a great yeah. record. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, they're lounging on a circle of couches, and I just love the difference between like King's Landing's like primped and preem sort of. Mm-hmm. standing versus Marcel is just like lounging on a couch in like a tank top this like looks sitting so next chill. to Tristane yeah uh and Jamie, Jamie like, notes what she's wearing and it's like um uh, hmm, hey, it's an interesting dress and hey, she's you a like cold uh, there yeah you feel <laughs> a little cold no we're in Dornish dad yeah, or the Dornish uncle? climate agrees with me <laughs> like it's warm there right you know mm-hmm. like there is south as south can well well, I mean, uh, I like the earth. he's doing know. the classic dad yeah. judging. Yeah, just like, yeah, just you gotta gotta put put you know, some more cover up a little bit, honey. Yeah. You know, uh, mm. you're not leaving this house in those shorts. Uh, but uh, coming to the point, Duran asked Jamie why he is stuck, why he has snuck into Dorne to abduct Marcella instead of you know just talking to him. And uh, he says he feared for her safety. They've uh, received a threat. Uh, he explains that they uh-huh. received a. Uh, a lion pendant jammed in the mouth of a viper and Duran he hears this and he's just like you fucking he looks uh, right at her like yeah. he's like he's like are you fucking kidding me he's like i like, have no doubt who did that uh and Marcel is like that was stolen from my room yeah. uh well wait a minute uh, <laughs> hold, on, hold on a second professor uh, the only thing i had from home yeah that's, that's <laughs> um that was, yeah but no nah, it was pretty clear who sent that threat um, yeah, and uh, Jamie's like, so yeah, that's why I'm here. Uh, you gonna cut my head off? And uh, Duran is like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I'm I'm not trying to plunge our country into war. I've seen war. I know what it does. Bodies piled and orphans left in cities, and uh, my people are not gonna go through that. So, uh, we're good here. And Alaria is like, what will you do then? You gonna break bread with Lannisters? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, exactly. It's literally pours, what we're doing yeah. right now. Um, pours like, wine with Jamie <laughs> and uh, raises his own goblet. A toast to King Tommen, first of his name. Long may he reign. And Jamie returns the toast, but Ilaria deliberately pours out her wine onto the floor. Mm-hmm. Love how it's no one even brings attention to it. It's just like, yeah, we know. Like, obviously, you hate us. Doran even, like, he does. No one even says a word about it. They just continue the conversation. It's just like, yeah. We know where you stand. Like, fair enough. Um, you know, she's pissed. I rightfully, you know, she had her her lover taken away, and uh, you know, she she even says, I, "Yeah, I think it's this episode um, of like, you know, you you your daughter's definitely innocent. You may even be innocent of that, you know, sort of thing." So she yeah. she knows, but she's like, it doesn't really matter to her. It's the Lannister name. Yeah, it's all that. Nuts. All that really matters. Long-standing um, beef, but uh, mm. yeah. Duran asks if Tommen indeed commands that his sister be returned to the capital, and Jamie is like, "Unfortunately, he does." And Duran's yep. like, "I cannot disobey my king. Marcella will return to King's Landing." Uh, she's upset for a moment, but then Duran explains the solution. Tristane will go along, take a seat on the small council which Tywin granted to Oberyn. Uh, and Duran insists that for the alliance between them to continue, the engagement must stand. And Tristane simply take will simply take his uncle's place on the small council. And Jamie finds Duran's request entirely reasonable. I also love that I don't think Jamie has any power to agree to this. Um <laughs> Yeah, and it's also not Tommen's order, it's Cersei's. Yeah. Um you know, it's like, oh well, we must obey the king. It's like, well, here obeying the queen. Already, well, and right that's now. the thing is that I also think that 
even though this is entirely reasonable, it would not matter to Cersei. Like they'd get there and yeah. she'd be like, fuck no, he's not going to sit on the goddamn council. You know, like that's a, that's exactly what would happen. Uh, but probably, uh, like, for, oh wait, does, do they just still keep on going to King's Landing? Mm-hmm. Like they do does, not return. They just go all the way to King's he's Landing. He's just there. Like he, he goes along with them. I do not remember what happens to Tristane. And I remember a lot in this show. I have no idea what happens to Tristane. I cannot maybe recall. Maybe they're like a kid for a kid. You know, it's like, well, you know, the whole reason we went here was for Marcella. So we'll send a message right back. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember at all what happens to him. Um, I imagine he's probably he's probably killed if I had to bet money. Um, but. Uh, Alaria gets up to leave and snaps that it is no wonder that Duran cannot stand. He has no spine. Um, mm. <laughs> kind of a cool. she, kind Yeah, of I mean, a, like super yeah. fucked up, but it's it's kind of dope. It was kind of a hard. It was kind of a hard line. Mm. Uh, as she walks out, he grabs her by the arm and lowers his voice, saying that she is the mother of four of his nieces, and for their sake, mm. he hopes she has a long and happy life. But if she talks to him that way again, she will not. Hard. Uh, all right, Duran. Okay, and he's just Prince Duran. Oh, I guess because it's like they don't have no a king. king. Yeah, yeah, it's just they they have King Tommen. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, this dude's chill. I, I I was I was I was actually close to going with him for character as well, but then I'm like ah, I can't really give another one to Shireen uh, from here on out. So I I slid it back to her, slid it back her I way. Mm-hmm. I went. Uh, I went kind of classic with it, and we we still haven't reached that, but uh, we will get there. Um, you know, Jamie's like, "All right, uh, what about my boy? What about Bron? Uh, what's going on with him?" Uh, Bron, you know, punched out Tristane when they tried to take Marcella, and Jamie's like, uh, "What's the normal punishment?" Or, or you know, Jamie's asked, anybody, "What's uh, the normal probably. punishment for striking a prince where you're from?" And Jamie's like, ah, you know, it was all me. Brown was following my orders. He's a mere soldier. You know, he, he, you know, if anybody should be punished, it's me. All right, Jamie, like sticking up for Braun there a little bit, you know, and I'll... I don't think he'd stick up for Braun so hard had he not been assured his survival. Um, mm. okay. You know, he was like, yeah, literally, like, knows, you cannot. Coming, he knows his daughter's coming back. It's like, all right, now, how about my boy? You know, yeah. like, it's like. It was my fault. You know, I did all that. You know, he's been, like, assured every bit of contingency, basically. And uh, this is the pretty, like, an easy deal to make with, like, the deal they, like, this is all that they're, like, doing to Braun. You know, like, um, I guess I'm I'm jumping the gun a little bit here. But, like, I like like how how, uh, Duran turned it into, like, a little teaching moment. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, all right, you know, I I could obviously sentence whatever I want. You know, I've, I've done this many times, but... But let's let's let the uh, let's let the little man take it on. What what do you think we should do to good old Bron? And he comes up with just I guess a swift elbow to the to the jaw. You know that's one for one, but uh, way worse. Um, yeah. Like it, like it, did Bron lose teeth here? You know like yeah. I think um, like out, it, I don't I don't did he spit out a tooth? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm... Um. But yeah, no this this. Honestly, like the Dorn scenes were, they were dope. Pretty I like those scenes. Yeah, um, man, I kind of forgot how how well done they were. Um, but yeah, we then go down to uh the prison cells where Nymeria and Tyene are sparring uh, out of boredom, boredom as Obara tries to ignore them and get some sleep. Mm. You know, they're doing the whole the game where they're swinging the hands back and forth. Little cool um, trivia about this little slap game: apparently, David Benioff challenged jason momoa to this game while david was drunk and jason momoa apparently might have broken david benioff's hand by doing this like do it like playing this game like he uh, he said it says benioff stood no chance upon returning home his hand started to hurt to the point where he believed that momoa had broken it um and then it was um, a false rumor that Momoa had purposely broken his hand so that they killed him off, and that this is it happened a while like oh, a long, while I ago. See. And uh, but that's just false. Yeah. They, apparently, it is true though that he got drunk and challenged 
the big one of the biggest. I think it's so funny whenever people try to create rumors about why people are killed off, especially when there's source material where the character fucking died that way. Like that's (laughs) needed. He needed to kind of die there. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Bro, no, I, it's still one of my favorite what ifs is like if Cal Drogo and Daenerys had just like wrote it out. Like if they. I mean, imagine the full strength of the, of the Dothraki. Like, Minorly, I guess you still need ships. Still need ships. You do still um, need ships. But, but uh, a commander like Cal Drogo, you know, King Drogo is what he would have become, which is kind of Whoa. wild. Um, Whoa. That'd be yeah. wild. King's King Landing Consort King. Drogo. Crazy. Can, what what would they do? I don't think they'd even stay in King's Landing. I think Drogo would be like, yeah, I'll, like, why would I want to stay here? I can't even ride my horse anywhere. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, I'm in a castle. Like, what Like what the fuck's going on? Uh, yeah, that, that would be weird I to see. I must return to the, to the great grass fields mm, of the Dothraki. Yeah. Mm. But, uh. Yeah, uh, they're playing that game and they talk all their shit and it's it's funny. But uh, the guards arrive and release Bronn and Tyene mocks him as he leaves. You know, who am I? And Bronn says, the most beautiful woman in the world. And uh, Areo leads Bronn back to the Solar when Duran, Jamie, and the rest remain. And Bronn apologizes to Tristane when he sees him and says he didn't mean anything by hitting him before. Jamie then gladly informs Bronn that the Martells agreed to let Bronn go with Jamie on one condition. And wordlessly, Arreo then delivers it by striking Bronn in the face with his elbow so hard that Bronn is knocked to the floor. Um, hmm. Nice and simple. Oh, nice what was. Simple. Oh, that's right. It was like. Um, Bronn was like, oh man, that pie, that looks really good. You know, he's been in a prison cell and he gets clocked. And then Duran's like, about some soup. Uh, because you won't be able to chew anything right now, dude. Like that was, right. I remember Duran just delivered a lot of just hard, like, yeah, dang, like, a dope ass character, man. I like, I liked it a lot. There's a, mm. there's, there's an interesting element to this character where like, uh, well, and like all, this whole situation, I love this whole brawn, the whole brawn thing. Cause whenever he's, you know, approached, he's like, am I going to like what waits for me at the end of this walk? You know, he's like. You'll find out soon enough. And then it made me think, like, I, I take for granted sometimes that, like, I just know who lives through situations, so sometimes I don't, like, think about it. But that mm-hmm. the Dornishman's Wife song he was singing a couple days ago, he, like, meant it when he's like, brothers, oh, brothers, my days here are done. The Dornishman's taken my life. You know, he's yeah. like, I'm done. I like, guess this is it. Yeah. You know? Uh, and the answer that the guard gave him, like, you'll find out soon enough. Yeah. That's like, you don't want to hear that. You know, no. it's like, well, I would have rather heard yes. Um, actually, you know, like, I, I don't know. I would have rather heard like just a definitive answer. Um, yeah, no, that was, I don't know. Love, man, I don't know. I might, no, I'm sticking with the Shireen and Davos. I was thinking about maybe switching to one, but I feel like it's like all the Dorn stuff is really good, but there's not like one particular scene that could be. No, I'm not particularly, I don't think, but, uh. Later in the courtyard, Areo brings Alaria and the Sand Snakes before Prince Duran in his wheelchair, and Duran gives Alaria an ultimatum. She can either choose to swear allegiance to him, or she can choose death. Restraining tears, she kneels and kisses his hand. Duran says he believes in second chances, and she is forgiven, but sternly warns her that he does not believe in third chances. Again, hard-ass line from Duran. Dude! Uh, yeah. I'm actually I'm gonna switch my character to Duran after all this. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, he he kind of owned here. Like, he's not gonna have uh, many more opportunities for it. You know what I mean? True. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't remember even. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be like season six premiere. He's he's fucking gone. Like it's it's not long. Is this like uh, natural causes or like someone killed no. him? Uh, no. Oh, Gloria. I, okay. Then <laughs> finds Jamie in uh in the study writing a letter back to King's Landing, informing him of his return. And, you know, she gives him shit. You know, you write like a seven-year-old. He's like, yeah, not a lefty. Uh, your your kind maester has agreed to transcribe it for me and send it off. Well, it's funny and, just seeing the, like, actual written on the, like, how it's yeah. so, like, crooked and, like, just getting, yeah. like, I don't know, worse as it goes. I thought, I don't know, that was, well, was just kind of funny. He does write like a there. seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, never written with his left hand before, you know. That, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I were to do that right now, I mean, I'd, Oh, I I write like and, shit with my left hand. Yeah, like, I'd also have to like hold. take my sweet fucking time to make anything look. Mm-hmm. Like I don't yeah. think I can hold a pencil in my left hand the way that I hold a pencil in. That's my what left I was hand, just thinking. Know? It's it's crazy how 
there's nothing different about your hands at all. But you're so uncoordinated with one of them. It's like, it's crazy. You try to throw a baseball with your left hand, you literally look like you don't even know how to throw a baseball. But then you just do it with, with your dominant hand and just... It's like, yeah, I don't, that's just crazy that that's even. Yeah, like, like I can do thing. that, like, shorthand scribble thing with my right way better than my fucking, mm. like, than my mm-hmm. left hand writing when I'm taking my fucking time. You know, like, that's, uh, yeah, sure, it's hard. Yeah, it's but, uh, yeah, uh, Alaria notes how odd it is that she and Oberon were looked down on for their sexuality in King's Landing. And Jamie mm. is scorned for his incestuous love for Cersei, to which he remains silent and gives no acknowledgement. Though a hundred years ago, if his name were Targaryen, no one would have blinked an eye at such a relationship. Cryptically, perhaps spurred by Duran, she then says that she knows your daughter, mm. Marcella, had no part in what befell Oberyn. And maybe even Jamie is innocent of that. She, she exits, and Jamie is left to ponder what seems to be an apology. Yeah, but a very weird... Like, way to end it. You know, your daughter's innocent, and you might be, too. Mm. No other way. Adios, my friend. Yeah. yeah, and Like, is that a threat? Is that an apology? Is that a... I don't know how to take that. Um, right. He just kind of walks, like, watches her walk out the room and is like, okay. Um, right. Doesn't know. Yeah, just sure. doesn't know really what to say there, but... Yeah, knowing what's coming, though, just... Man, brutal. Yeah, that does hurt. Does hurt. Um, we won't get we, we won't get there for a little bit. So I'll let it well, breathe. Yeah. But yep, that concludes the story in the Water Gardens. We're now in Bravos, mm-hmm. wherein Arya and her Lana persona is once again pushing her cart through the Canal Street g- Canal Canal Streets of Bravos. Um, sometimes clams and cuckoos, <laughs> oysters, clams and cuckoos. <laughs> Ugh. God, that that one dude, that one just like fuckhead in the street too. A that was like, man. oh no, know, the guys before, no, yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. How much for your little clam? I thought she was gonna have a comeback with Cockle somehow, you know? Right, but, right. Uh, I mean, I guess it's in this identity to not be Arya Stark, right, know? right. Um, so, so that's all right. But I mean, I thought a Cockle joke was. I mean, I, I thought, I don't know. I've never really heard Cockle before and i thought it was just a setup for a joke and then it didn't land and i was like ah oh, okay well, that's a disappointment no you're um, right there was absolutely a missed opportunity there but uh yeah she passes the thin man who sells insurance to sailors having uh been given a mission by the faceless men to assassinate him with poisoned oysters and just mm-hmm. as she reaches him however she stops in her tracks as she stares fixatedly on a boat at the dock which has caught her full attention Stepping out of the boat is Mace, Master of Coin Mace Tyrell, mm. and the commander of his guard, none other than Sir Marin Trant. You know, One, I never oh. thought I would see the day where I was happy to see Sir Marin Trant. When he popped out on this boat, I was like, let's fuck it. It clicked. I'm like, oh my god. It all came wow. back. This is like, I'm like, oh, wow, this is I've been so building good. This, I've been building this death up for a while I now. know, and I can't uh, believe I forgot this. This is this so is a ma- good. Like, this it's is a, on her list. You well, know, and it's the also been Arya's first, with. like, it's her first like, list. She does list. a number on yeah, this guy, yeah, this, you know. Uh, this is to, to really do it to him. But I was like, oh, let's fucking go. I was like, you know, I didn't know if it was coming this episode or not. Dude, but I was I mean, like, like, we've been talking about this for almost mm-hmm. a fucking year, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like... yeah. And it didn't click whatsoever. Just now, when he got off the boat, I was like, can go, Jet. I literally, like, I think I fist pumped in the air. Like, it was yeah, that much of a, of a revelation where I was like, oh, my God. Fuck wow. Yeah. What a moment. No, it really, but... it's, 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 it's grand. But, uh. Yeah, that's one of the names on her list, Marin Trant. And Marin helped betray her father and kill her water. You know, she's she's very happy. She's very happy to see him. But Mace was mm. sent by Cersei to treat with the Iron Bank, which is starting calling in the Crown's massive debts and at least trying to gain a little more time to deal with the problem from the bankers. Uh, Mace is greeted at the dock by the bank's representative, Tycho Nestorus. Mm. Um, Do you know this guy from anywhere? Absolutely. Uh, is yes, Sherlock? Sherlock is Sherlock. He's the brother of Sherlock in the show yeah, Sherlock. Right. But yeah, Mark Gattis has uh, he's got a good resume on him. He's been in a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, Sherlock would definitely be a top one that especially the first time I watched this. 
that I pointed to, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's that's that guy's Man, I brother." Gotta, I think I that I haven't seen Sherlock in quite a while. That's another TV show that's kind of up in a different league. It's very short, you know, kind of a little mini series, but you know, but it's got that hour and a half every episode yeah. thing going on. Mm-hmm. A little cinema feel, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, just a little a non-alcohol part, you know. I don't partake. Um, actually, in the alcohols, I'm too smart for that. Um, I don't know. That's that's who he's playing here, right? But, and uh, Mesa, uh, you know, he, he addresses Tycho here. He's like, "Hello, I'm Mace Terrell. How are you today?" You know, his whole fucking thing. He he looks like he's about to go singing through the streets and like throwing the arms up and. You know, he's, he he's putting on a theater production, it seems. He literally does. Like, at later, like, when they leave, he's singing. Mm. And they're like, oh, my God, I That's never very thought true. that dude would shut up. They're like, holy shit, this dude. Like, he's trying so hard to be like a Rhaegar, you know. Like, yeah, you just walked through the streets, sang to the people, you know. He he gathered money from this, his singing and then gave it to an orphanage or gave it to a, you know, whatever. He's, he's like trying, I don't know. Is he, is, is he trying to like, why just, or is he just that theatric that he's like, I'm just going to sing to these that guys. Theatric, you know, I think he's just that theatrical. I do believe that there is a little bit of a, he's trying to put out an essence of, you know, he's a, he's a robust, look at me, lovable man. You yeah. know, that's what he's trying to mm. be. You know? Okay. Fair, fair. annoying as shit. God, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be weird to play that in real life, you know, knowing that you're like the annoying character in the show. Right. Um, I wonder if he's just chill in real life. Or Probably also, is. if he doesn't know he's the annoying character in the show. Oh, no. That if he's actually worse. blind to it, that'd yeah. not be good. It'd be crazy if we see like a round table with the actors and he's just actually oblivious and he plays he acts, the exact like, This isn't like a makeup and wig and stuff. <laughs> this is just what he looks like. Oh no! Oh, I feel like I'm I'm going in on the man a little too hard. Let's um, <laughs> let's. Oh God, who's he played by? Roger Ashton Griffiths. I mean, that kind of sounds like the name of a guy. Yeah, no, this, this guy play. definitely is giving me the vibes. Oh shit! Okay. Oh no, he was a singer in the English National Opera at the London Coliseum. Oh my God! Um, in a lot of plays. Wow. Oh yeah, he was P.T. Barnum in Gangs of New York. Forgot about that. Whoa. Yeah, he wait, was in wait. Gangs of New York. Who? P.T. Barnum, true? the guy who ran Barnum and Bailey's The Circus. Uh, <gasps> oh. oh my I forgot God. to point that out. I wanted to point that out during the Gangs oh of New York God, podcast. That's right. I, completely I did see that, too, when I was watching. I'm like, oh, my God, that's fucking Mace Terrell. What the hell? Yeah. It was just how okay. much of an impact he makes as Mace Terrell that we can forget about it. <laughs> we're talking about something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's only in four other episodes after this, and one of them is him blowing up at the end. So that's cool. That's great. Um, that's great. But, but yeah, this guy's this guy's worked with Martin Scorsese. So hey, you know, you know what? Got to give it to him there. Got to um, give it to him. Got to give it to him. Hats off to Roger Ashton Griffith. Uh, anyways, but, we're footsteps uh, into Bravos. By the way, literally yeah, Aaron all... <laughs> Frank getting off the boat. Um, yeah, all the while Arya Arya has remained uh, froze. Staring at Sir Marin, ignoring the thin man's request for some oysters. And then uh, Arya completely abandons her mission to assassinate the thin man and instead follows Marin through the streets. She's like, yep, this is it now. I'm." She was like, no one? Oh, forget about that shit. I am a Fuck that. Oh, man, I, I didn't know how much I was not, you know. Oh, <laughs> well, well, she does have her list and she's not going to get an opportunity like this again. You know, they, they could be in and out, gone. That that thin man, he's there. He's sat. You know, he's that's where he makes his money. He's not going anywhere. Um, she did have a mission. You know, she is trying to prove who she is, though. So, um, but... No, yeah, that, like, I think it's just kind of like a quick... Not a reminder, because, you know, I don't think she ever truly loses sight of who she is, you know, but like... Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-mm. E- it shows just how much of a means to an end the faceless men are to her. You know, yeah. she's like, oh, Marin Trent. Okay, fuck yeah. Sorry, gotta go. You know, I, I yeah. ain't got shit to do. Um, this one's understandable. I mean, fuck oh, this yeah. guy. This guy fucking sucks, Oh, my dude. God. They, like, Holy he already shit. sucked. He was already terrible. He was already a terrible person. 
Turn him but up to 12, you know? They like, were like, turn- what if we made him one of the worst people, though? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. They went full Tarantino with it. You know, like, they, they did the whole, mm-hmm. you know, they've already made him bad. But, you know, sh- from what we've seen so far from him, stabbing out his eyes and stabbing him, like, 15 times in the chest and slowly slitting his throat might be, you know, a tad over mm-hmm. the top. But after what we see, it's perfect. It's exactly what he deserves. That's Anything, exactly what he needs. It's underwhelming, you know. I think. Yeah. I think uh, more. Could In fact, have it might have been too quick. Yeah, I know. I think. I think it was a little merciful from Arya. Um, <laughs> man, yeah, I don't know. And that's the thing is that this episode, he doesn't even really do like he's bad. Like it, it turns him up to like eleven. But then next episode, it's like, oh my god, this dude mm-hmm. is is literally just a piece of shit. Like. Yeah, just die already. Like, yeah, no, I kind of wanted something more, but I'm glad Arya was the one that got to do it, man. I, I, I don't, I can't believe this didn't click. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, it's it's fantastic. But uh, after visiting the Iron Bank building, Marin and a few other Lannister guards depart from Mace at night to go visit a little brothel, and Arya sneaks into the brothel under the guise of a simple uh, cellar of oysters and clams from a handbasket, and uh, the bouncer Brusco doesn't want her in at first, but the uh. You know, prostitute Lara. Mm-hmm. She's, uh, I think she's kind of the. Oh wait, no, she's she's one of Arya's regular customers. Ah, oh, she's the first person you see Arya. You know, she comes down the road as she's heading home from work, and she always buys an oyster from her. Uh, it's like the yeah. first thing she says whenever she's talking to Jockin about her Lana persona. Whoa! In season four, she's at the bathhouse. No way. She's at the bathhouse with that uh, Salador San when Davos interrupts to recruit the dude. She's one of the girls in the bathtub as well. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. The one who finishes the joke, the punchline? Yes. Yeah, that knows the joke before. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's her. And well, then, I do believe that that is when... young selfish who roams. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That is when Davos went to Bravos to treat with the Iron Bank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So like, it's it's cool that they kept maintain big, a bit of a continuity. They had that shit ton of gold. He was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're you're coming with me. You know, like Davos was like, You're you're not refusing this. Um, Where's my yeah, man? I need my man's wow. back. Mm. But yeah. uh what the hell, man? Just nowhere. Just that's it. What with a blows. name like that, Salador San? Like, bring man. back Salador San. Uh, but this is one of Arya's regular customers and tells him to let her stay as oysters are said to be an aphrodisiac. And Arya sells a few and then makes her way to the back chambers where she spies on Marin from uh, behind some shutters. And again, one of those moments that visually is just like, this is not like other Thrones episodes. You know, it has mm. that, that like shutter she's the looking through. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, dude, very, very mm. cool. But uh Marin catches a brief look at her at one point as she seems vaguely familiar, but he just shrugs it off. It's been years since he last saw her, you know. Um, the brothel's madam presents several girls in succession to Marin here, uh, but he passes on each, you know, too old, too old, too old. And, uh, you know, each one, the madam is presenting a girl who's, you know, younger. Mm hmm. Um, and then, uh, Marin, you know, he's like, too old. Do you have what I'm looking for? Yeah. And I love that, like, even though they provide this service. They try not like, to. Every time that he says too old, each time it gets increasingly more like, oh. Uh. You know, and like, even the madam and each girl that he's saying is too old keeps going like, Oh no, you know, like they, they're all uncomfortable with the situation and, and the madam even has to like regain her composure and be like, of course we do. I'll be oh, right yeah. back. Cause she has to, she has to be, you know, put on the, the HR face or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. her work face. And then immediately as he leaves, she's like, Oh, all right, fuck that guy. You know, like, wow, that guy sucks. Yeah, it was. It was in like the performance of of like the youngest one that did come out, Ooh. you know, like her just looking scared, like she was just a fr- like not, I don't know. It, it seemed that that this was I don't know very uncommon. Uh, she's 
I mean, uh, she's also just very young. It was just very, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, like, it, it seems yeah. they haven't had anyone coming in here asking around for a girl this young ever is kind of the impression you get. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, uh, the madam slowly realizes what he wants, uh, and she brings out a very young girl whom Aaron accepts gruffly, bluntly saying he expects another, quote, fresh one tomorrow. Um, Dude. God. Yeah, yeah, fucking horrendous. And after he leaves, the madam uh, runs into Arya and shoes her out. And later on, Arya returns to the house of black and white, empty-handed, having abandoned her first mission for the Faceless Men. And when Jakagar asks what happened, she lies to him and says that the thin man simply wasn't hungry today and didn't order any of her, her oysters. And Jock quips that perhaps this is why he is the thin man. Mm. And Arya promises that she will follow through on the assassination tomorrow. She departs. And while Jock seems to suspect that she was lying, he makes no outward reaction of it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting way to handle that on Jockin's part, usually. You know, when someone lies, they like what we've seen is you, you smack he her. He knows. You know? No, yeah. he. I think he knows. He knows exactly what she's doing. Um, And I think... Like, I think this is, it was set up on purpose. They, they know, um, that Marin Trant and, uh, Loris, what, no, not Loris, fucking Mace. Mace, thank you, Terrell, are coming over. They know they're gonna come in on this port to the Iron Bank. They know this insurance guy's right fucking there. Go kill him on this day that they're coming in. Let's see if you, let's see if you can... If you're up for the task, you know, let's see if you can actually put Arya Stark away. Yeah. Um, and then what kind of nailed the coffin or put the nail in the coffin for me was next episode. Like her punishment um, that she gets is the same punishment she gives um, Mace. Mm. And it was kind of like, OK, I Give think Mar- Mar- like there. Yeah. Mar- oh, sorry. Marin Trent. Um, <laughs> wow. Flipped him uh, twice there. But, yeah, no, I think I think. Jockin's in the know. Um, oh, yeah, and I think there's a on. lot There's a lot that points you in that direction, especially considering that by the end of her arc here, like at all, Jockin is never actually grooming her to be a faceless man, and he, know, he knows that she's mm-hmm. not going to join their order, because when he sends her off at the end, he like, he's like, he like kind of smiles, and he's like, yep. This is this is where you're supposed to be. This is how things are supposed to go. I was yeah. just supposed to help you along, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. I think, like, so I'm, I'm with you there. I do think there's a certain degree yeah. of like, maybe, this is how things have to happen. Yeah, um, like this is one. Like, maybe you got to cross a line. You know, she hasn't killed anyone like this yet. You know, you got to kind of, if you want to be a killer like Jockin, if you want to be like the weapons that they are, you kind of gotta just gotta go like crazy that. on some people. You gotta like. Yeah. You got to go cra- crazy emotional kills so that just another assassination or just a random whoever is just like nothing to you. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. Right. Yeah, I'll do that. That's nothing. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. that I... concludes the story in Bravos for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we are in Marine, wherein, attended by Tyrion Lannister, Masande, and Dario Naharis, Daenerys sits in the royal box at Daznak's pit. His Darzo Larak arrives late, claiming to have been putting the final touches on the arrangements for the event, quote unquote. When the first two combatants take the field, his Dar indicates that Daenerys is to start the fight with a clap of her hands. Dario verbally spars with his Dar for much of the first match, drawing Daenerys' attention from the, you know, spectacle in front of her, which is sweet. Fucking loved it. You know, I love that Dario, you know, he's talking shit, you know, Whoa. to. Talking shit and freaking turning on Daenerys at the same time. Uh, that's his you goal. He wants is like, tractor. He knows she doesn't like you this shit. Know. I don't know. I think this is how he speaks in the bedroom a little bit. Or this is why like Daenerys just finds him attractive because he's just such an attractive man as well. Oh, don't as, get like, me wrong. This is undoubtedly hot. Um, it's undoubtedly yeah, hot, like, but the, I think he, he knows exactly what he's too. doing to distract her from this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is even player. more hot. You know, that's just oh, even more, dude. that's even more attractive. But yeah, the, the shit talking about how the, the big men could never keep up with him because he was too quick. And then the big guy cuts off the little guy's head. Thought that was funny. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, I mean, they were really setting up the little guy to win. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go. And like Tyrion's there too. So it's like, you know, seemingly we're going to get the little guy to win. 
But uh, no, no, that uh, that big dude sliced his head off pretty clean. Oh, um, he did. Oh, he did. Now, didn't yeah. he? Um, yeah. And and his dar, um, like what? What's up with? Wh- why was he late? Is there actually like? Do we get reasons why? Uh, he just because... he just says he was putting the final touches on the uh, on the arrangements for the event today. As in the Sons of Harpy, probably or no. But like he died, I, he they kill him. I, I think it was just he was hoisted by his own petard. They were just killing motherfuckers, and he happened to die. Was that just the plan? Just kill, just, just kill, kill as many people in here. Because I guess yeah, That's they killed his that. crowd. Yeah, crowdsmen. Okay. Huh. Hmm. But is it ever called back to, do you know? Like, did they ever, like, in later story, I don't know, like, in the story I don't think, I think this is supposed to put the idea that he could have been working with them to bed. Because Dario, like, his Dar's like, my queen, come with me, I know a place that we can hide. And Dario's, like, suspicious of that. And then the Sons of the Harpy start stabbing him, and he's like, oh, okay. Oh, maybe he was going for... Be, trying to be the king because he's married now and mm. if Daenerys goes he's the king of marine yeah um and maybe this was just a hope you know a public not a not an ex not like an assassination so it's like uh, kind of obvious or I don't know but the, a little less obvious maybe I don't know yeah you know um yeah I, I I could I could see that but regardless um next up in the next matchup her attention returns to the arena when Jorah Mormont gives the uh traditional dedication to her you know i fight or uh, mm-hmm. i live and die for your honor your grace or whatever the fuck uh, my oh glorious queen the voice yeah, yeah, she, like, yeah. i was close you know uh i went with duran i switched it to duran but mm-hmm. i almost went with jorah and the reason i switched is because i gave it to jorah for like the same reasons as a couple episodes ago when i gave it to jorah last um mm-hmm. and it's like well yeah oh. you know i but it's fine. It's fine. You know, so spread the love a little bit more. Duran's not going right, to get many yeah. more chances. But, uh, yeah, he deserves one. Jorah's um, <laughs> Jor- got a little bit longer to go. And he's got some cool, cool story arcs. Oh, um, to be sure. But, uh, in spite of Jorah's previous successes, he has decidedly mixed results in the grand melee he finds himself in. Uh, it begins with six fighters, uh, with Jorah pairing up with a Norvosi long axe fighter similar to Areo Hota, who we see down mm-hmm. south in Dorne. Uh, same type of fighter here. And uh, the Norvosi is able to land several blows against Jorah, eventually knocking him to the ground. However, Jorah is able to bring out his dagger and eventually bury it in the Norvosi's chest after a brief melee. He's not doing this like he did last time, which is the other reason I was considering picking him. He has mm-hmm. to He has to fight for he his life to. here. Yeah. yeah, there's no... Only one. Well, and it's the way it he like positions the body towards. Den- there is like a. It feels like there's like an animosity there, which is why it's almost believable when he picks up the spear and throws it up there that it might be at Daenerys. You know, we know it's not, but the, mm-hmm. he does everything yeah. with a, a certain sort of aggression that you don't really see out of him typically. Maybe the grayscale's getting to him, right? You know, he's he's uh because. I don't know. We we've seen him kind of effortlessly take out people. And this this is like a higher, I guess, you know, like this is the major leagues, I guess, you know. Yeah. As co- to compared to the the single A ball that he was playing down in, you know, when he just dismantled right. everybody without right. killing them. Um so I guess this is a little different. The skill level is a little different, but he was struggling a little bit, you know, and and then seeing Daenerys like worried you know and then like them being like hey like Tyrion's like you can stop this like Amelia was ahead. like Amelia yeah. Clark was acting or mm-hmm. acting good um mm. yeah That's, I uh is that, is that who yes it is who I went with I was like I knew hey. I, I knew I had something in Marine um, and I this uh this little breakdown kind of breezes over my favorite part of the Marine storyline which is the conversation they all have up there oh, in the yeah, box between his dar that's where my lines from. That's where my yeah. line comes from. Um, oh, okay, let's see. Yeah, see, it's it's wonderful. I think oh, that they have yeah. they have just such great exchanges up there. And Tyrion is just dropping bar after bar after bar. You know, uh, yeah. Amelia or Daenerys says something about how you know 
the, the, his daughter's like, they're fighting for your honor, you know, like they're fighting for you. And she's like, it's for somebody else's, you know, it's somebody else's wishes that they're fighting for. And, you know, she says something about how one day his great city may return to ashes just as they will. And uh, he's mm-hmm. like, oh, at your hand. And she says, if it comes to that, they'll have died for a purpose. Whoa. Yeah. Like that's, that's I don't know, like one day dark. You know, Marine was here long before we were and it will be here mm-hmm. long after us or whatever. Like we have to uphold tradition, blah, blah, blah. And Tyrion just throws in the you know, my father would have liked you or whatever. Like, yeah, oh, my father. Uh, that, that, uh, that's not my line I'm going with. That was just one. I just thought it was funny. Uh, it was just like a little little jab thrown in there. Because that's that's kind of like the most insulting thing Tyrion can say to someone. Oh, is absolutely. That, like, my father would have liked you. Um, that means I hate you more than anything, pretty much. Um, but, yeah, no, there was – um, let's see. I think my, they my were, line was uh... – you know, uh, Hisdar said something really well, well said, and elo- and mm-hmm. Tyrion goes, "Ah, that was that was eloquently put." Uh, mm. I find eloquent men are wrong every bit as much as idiots, or whatever the fuck he says. But that was the one that I went with. Um, yeah, no, there, this this was full of lines. Like it's this was just great, like political philosophical talk here, um, and I'm I'm all for that. Um, especially when it's coming from Peter Dinklage. Um, and I I think, I forgot what led Tyrion to say this. I think it was um, something along the lines of like, oh, you um, fighting, this is entertainment. This is awesome, you know, whatever. Like this, nothing mm. can be done without violence or whatever. You know, like name me one thing that hasn't been done without violence. And Tyrion's like, you know, I mean, it's it's all right. And yes, it, like most things do happen like that, but I don't, I don't need it in my leisure time, you know. Dude. Right? Like, I, yeah. Like this isn't, this isn't a, an entertainment. And and then uh, his dar claps back with something, but then Tyrion says, "It's easy to confuse what is with what ought to be, especially yeah. when what is has worked out in your favor." Um, and just, just kind of like telling him, you know, you, you've been, you've been seated in a in a position where you were very powerful from the very you know you, you couldn't see the the troubles in in what's going on because you're just born into it you know you you, you don't have that outside perspective um and if it's working out you know if it ain't broke don't fix it that's that's their their kind of viewpoint but you know i don't know i mean you need some form of entertainment but is it really sending just dudes out there to kill each other i mean People were bored back then, I guess, you know, like to get to that point. Or yeah, if this is uh if this is what our entertainment is, man, what are we what are we cooking, you know? I mean, wow. I mean they didn't have cameras, you know. They couldn't make Christopher Nolan or Scorsese films, you know. That that's they're not pumping those out. I guess they have the theater, you know. They do have like little pop up plays and stuff. Um Yeah, brothels. Yeah, like the entertainment is just really kind of rough you know yeah it's just not the best industry um this time period yeah no to be sure but uh i mean we you know you like to think we've evolved quite a bit but we you know we've got ufc fighting and we've got uh boxing and you know those are uh, yeah one of the only situations where you can legally kill someone like that's kind of crazy like that's nuts like if they die that's like in the fucking terms and conditions dog that's that's kind of that's crazy but back in the day it was expected that you died it was you you yeah, right. one <laughs> must die you know it's not not like we're trying to just have a good fight and then we both walk away from this most fighters hug you know even sometimes after the ufc and yeah, stuff it's an like intimate that. Like experience respectful. almost yeah, it's like respectful uh, but then no here it is if no one dies something someone will make someone die i don't know oh, yeah. like Someone's dying, no matter what. Yeah, but the the fight continues to spin out of Jorah's control as he finds himself hopelessly outmatched by a water dancer and suffers many cuts from his opponent's uh, little little mm-hmm. needle like sword. And mm-hmm. during the fight, a Miranese pit fighter is able to lance his opponent in the chest, and the water dancer eventually knocks Jorah to the ground and is about to deliver a killing blow, but fails to notice that the pit fighter 
uh, who just killed another guy is just coming up behind him to kill him as well. And I love the way that this guy's like, yeah, I'll kill this guy from behind, but Jora, I respect you. For some reason, I'm going to let you get up and do the honorable thing. Um, yeah, the Westerosi knight, the like, probably, I don't know. I'm assuming everyone's there like a little racist towards Westeros. You know, it's like, ah, they're they're too fancy over there. You know, I feel like that's right. that's kind of the viewpoint on Westeros. But yeah, he it's wants like, to show nah, him up. Dude. Yeah, you stand up. I don't want an easy kill, but as I just got an easy kill a couple seconds ago, whatever. Right, yeah, right. Whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, Jorah stares for a few moments at Daenerys after he, uh, you know, he's saved. You know, he looked he looked up at her as he's about to die, like. I do this for you, you know, I'm ready to die for you. Um, but you know, he gets saved and such. And then, uh, you know, it goes ahead and kills the guy really rather easily too. You know, they went back and forth for a second, but he does that little somersault into the, the killing Ooh. blow. You think he was playing the whole time? You think he had it completely in the bag, but he was like, I want to show Daenerys that I would die. So let me make it like a good, me, <laughs> no, I think he me, was out mad. Like I don't think he's playing okay. with his life like that. Um, uh, that's I don't know, but, but if he's that confident, I don't. Yeah, he's not like. Is he like? He did beat a Dothraki blood rider in single combat, though. I don't know. He got lucky. That was the one where the hook kind of, got stuck in his armor, uh, and he couldn't get his. Okay. He almost. You know, oh, if he didn't have the armor, he would have been done. He'd though. have been fucked. Yeah. yeah, he was done for. Um. Fair enough. And while yeah. the weapon is stuck in his side, he just slashed the dude's face. So it's funny that he keeps using that as an example of like how awesome he is. When if like, like it's true, technically true, but technically he did kill a Dothraki blood rider in single combat. But and then um, they're boasting it up to be Cal Drogo as well. So like th- this dude should be the should be just I don't know the Jon Snow. Of, yeah, uh, right of of Essos, of Essos right, right now. Right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, Jorah stares for a few moments after, at Daenerys after winning and then suddenly grabs and hurls a spear at the royal blo- box, causing everyone to panic. But it lands straight in the chest of a son of the harpy. And uh, that's what like, I remember watching this for the first time being like, oh, like the shot of them like standing up mm-hmm. with those freaky ass oh. masks. And then the music, too. It's like, oh, it's great. Like, oh, yeah, that's a. Oh, man, it is creepy. And like the. Um, you know, all the, like, what are they, oh my god, I'm blanking, the soldiers, the army that they, Unsullied, uh, yeah, the, the Unsullied, Unsullied that are around there, and then Dario. Horrendous, horrendous yeah. security. What are they cooking, the Unsullied? What the fuck do you mean this is the finest army in the world? They are getting you, bitched by these random motherfuckers weekly. And yeah, did you see, like, the overhead shot of, like, Daenerys was, like, over on, I don't know, her little tent area fucking across the way literally like all the way across the pit there's just a a line of unsullied on like this random concrete like pad dividing like some crowd or whatever it's like that would have been a lot more useful surrounding your fucking queen maybe i don't know um, hey man i love gray worm he's got to get his money up okay he's, he's got to get his money up he got he dude that dude that dude was uh yeah, I don't know, getting stabbed. I don't know how long that recovery time is, but we need him back, you know. We do. We need Grey Worm oh, back. That's true. Back. He was he hasn't been in there lately. I forgot about mm-hmm. that. And, and remember the fight with uh Barristan? He almost went out with Barristan, dude. Yeah. They they, uh, they tore him up. Yeah, he's just just been recovering and chilling with Masande, you know. Um Yeah, he's been like having Samuel a little Harley and Gilly, you know. he has been having a nice little break up there, but uh mm-hmm. Yeah, the Sons of the Harpy reveal themselves on every level of the arena, which just furthers my yeah. questioning of the Unsullied's abilities. And, you know... Well, they could have just had their masks in their back pockets, you know. Like, the whole we mask... Pat, we ain't patting motherfuckers down on the entrance, you know? Like, y'all, y'all this is the time before metal detectors, uh, man. Yeah, they don't, they don't got that. They're not patting down everyone that walks in, you know? like You ought to on. when you got the Sons of the Harpy out here, bro. That's my thing. Like, that you know they're a threat. Active like terrorist organization yeah man against, yeah you know what fair enough uh and she's going <laughs> the most public place there is in marine uh pretty the queen's much. gonna be there you know like i don't know man it just it just yeah. feels like logically mm-hmm. you do everything you possibly could to prevent yeah. something like this yeah. um like there needed to be a lot more sons of the harpy for this to kind of be like believable that they're taking out the unsullied like this easily because well here's the thing tag, like, 
I think there needs to be a lot less for it to be believable that they ever even got in. You know, like they're fucking everywhere. It's so it's almost everybody in the fucking arena. Like it's True, it is kind of half. Yeah, uh, like hmm. That is regardless. Kind of no. I'm not actually I'm not actually pressed about it. I think it makes sense. Like no, you know, this episode dramatically, zero. dramatically Both. it has to happen like this. But uh yeah, the Sons of the Harpy, you know, they start going ahead and slaughtering motherfuckers and uh masters and freedmen alike, which indicates to me that if his dar's involved, like they've they've abandoned their like mm-hmm. loyalty to the old ways. They've got their own vision for what's going to happen now. Um, then they they go ahead and off his dar, and Jorah and Dario, you know, Jorah that moment when he sticks out his hand to Daenerys and she takes it. Fuck yes, you know I love that moment. Uh, Don't worry about the grace that's two inches away from that hand yeah. right there. Yeah, I know that. Kind of, I, that that thought crossed my mind. I was like, oh wait a minute, is that the is that the right hand or the wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Don't put out is the wrong the hand, game, Jorah. Boy? Don't put out the wrong arm, dude. Right, uh, right. But, but uh, no, that was a nice moment. Jorah taking Daenerys and then Tyrion mm-hmm. kind of going ape shit, you know, killing someone with a dagger and being like, yeah. all right, save him. I was like. Like, okay, Tyrion, you know, the small like, guy killing the guy with the muscle, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck yeah, I like yeah. it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, finding the exits blocked, the group makes a stand in the center of the pit with with the remainder of the Unsullied around them, and they are hopelessly outnumbered. The circle keeps getting smaller and smaller, and Daenerys and Masande take each other's hands and look at each other, ready for death. And then this, I don't, I don't agree with the, uh, wiki of Westeros's assessment of the situation here. Uh, they say that she closes her eyes ready to face death, but the way the music drops out and the way she takes the breath, she is absolutely calling for her dragon. She's calling right? Drogon. A hundred percent. Like this was, we, we were joking about this mind connection they have. It's a hundred percent real. Like, oh yeah, I don't well know. that's the thing is that we've known it to be real, but what we've joked about in the past is them like literally talking to talk, each other. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, like, all right, wait for the most dramatic yeah. moment. You yes. got it. Like, come oh, out, your- make it super fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nah, but like, yes. it says she closes her eyes prepared for death, and I completely disagree with that. I think she is the way. Like, I think everything in that moment makes because you even hear her like. Like you hear her breath go in, like she is. They're trying that's, to tell you that she is not doing ready something. For death. Like I don't know. No. Like that's that's a maybe maybe a little bit of both. Maybe like I think right before I think it's like a last. It's a hail mary. You know, yeah, she doesn't if know it's going to work. Doesn't come. I'm dead, uh, but Drogon's going to come. You know, the, the look she gives Masande right before is a ready for death look. Like that's what that is. But closing her eyes, she is trying to prevent it. Like that's what. That's what's happening there. But regardless, at that moment, the, you know, the draconic screech pierces the air and Drogon appears, descending upon the arena, flying yeah, out of a giant me. flame burst. Bro, mm-hmm. and this is when I was like, you know, I, this brought a tear to my eye. I was like, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. I, I was just like, I knew it was coming. It's super cool. But like building upon the relationship yeah. between the rider and the dragon, this is the moment rather than her climbing up and flying off with him that is built upon by house of the dragon where house of the dragon is kind of like made every other example of flying on a dragon kind of not mean less, but like it, it looked fucking crazy in that show. Like it looked so yeah. good. Um, pretty, pretty sick. And like, it even, was this, like the calling of him, him responding and him mm, being there. That made me go like, that's a fireball cool. too. like making yeah. noise, making noise, you know, just, <laughs> just screeching. <laughs> So that, and then everyone, everyone immediately stops and just looks up because they know they're like, well, we had a good run. You know, it, yep. the, the, the game has now changed. And they try. And it's like, if I can run away. Um, and I don't know Eat why. Some of them. Usually this doesn't bug others. me. Usually this doesn't bug me. But like, it's strictly like packs of four sons of the harpy that get burned like in groups it's never like a big like grand group and maybe that's because they're literally on fire and like the stunt people you know maybe it's just like you can't light i'm more willing to bet it's a li- i bet it's like a, a legal, legal limitation reason. yeah like yeah. you can't light 10 people on fire in the same room you know I that don't know will have to change if that's the case because they light several people on fire in season eight 
Really? All in the same shot. Like, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Maybe they got But a, the maybe other thing to consider is potentially you know. that they are all the same stunt people who are the only four willing to do from it. Different angles. Yeah, they yeah. just shot it one time and just from different angles. And then I mean, how many times up. are you like volunteering to get set on fire, man? You yeah, know, like that's that a um surprisingly like it's it only goes on for like 10 seconds you just put a shit ton of jelly on you like i don't know you're like you barely even feel it apparently Mm -hmm. um i've always wanted to try it because everyone that comes out of it they're like i can't wait to do it again that was so like just awesome and that's what they did to uh that's what they did to chad stahelski when he was the stunt double for v and v for vendetta Mm -hmm. remember when he was standing basically butt ass naked in the flames like that's uh that's exactly what they did they just covered him in jelly and Mm -hmm. we're like good luck buddy um, just don't die. Don't suff- suffocation is the only thing you got to worry about. All yeah, smoke, right. Stuff like that. But the the heat apparently isn't smoke really inhalation that. is going to yeah. be a problem. But um, regardless, many of the suns uh, scatter and tear as Drogon bites, crushes, and burns everybody. And in half by just <laughs> like ripping his head, ripping back, him and back and forth. It's like my it was like watching my dog play with a toy, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like a human. Um, yeah, it's a whole human that he's yeah, ingesting. Yeah. Actually, I think he just spit him out. Actually, he was just like, yeah. He just nah. spit him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's I'll like, eat later. One half like, of his body flies that way, and he flings the other half the other way. So, like, uh, it's a real Ooh. message. Yeah. Um, I mean, and you know, they're here. they're throwing the spears. You know, mm-hmm. they're they're like, let's get this dragon down, and it's barely doing a thing to him. You know, I mean, it's doing a little something. It's making him mad, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um. Daenerys hastily makes an effort to remove the spear, spear promote, uh, sorry, prompting Drogon to turn on her with a uh, huge roar. And he yeah. stops short of attacking her and becomes calm. And uh, trying to get like Drogon. Her. Oh, no, mm-hmm. no. Trying to get Drogon out of the sun's range, Daenerys climbs atop his back and bids him Valad. Mm-hmm. And just then. We watch him. I love the little running takeoff that dragons do. It always gets me hyped up, like the big steps Boom, and, the and then jump. You know yeah. the swell of the music. The mm. oh, dude, a wonderful! Like Ramin Djawadi is one of the finest composers, like ever for my mm. money. Like uh, extremely underrated as far as you know. When you hear the big names, it's I mean, like John uh. Williams, of course, is the first one to come to mind, but. Mm. Modernly, people go with like Ludwig Göransson and and guys like that. Man, Ramin Djawadi with this Westworld, um, and movies. I think he did he did Eternals, which has a great soundtrack as well. Um, like dude has God, just got it. Like that. theme is so good. Like oh, this so Marine, good. Oh, like, like the the fucking choral swell yeah, like, in the moment. Fucking everyone's fantastic. watching in disbelief as well. They're like. Oh my god, like the dragon was already so unbelievable, but now she's on top of the thing fly you know, like it's just like, oh my god, like what's the happening right now? Dragon rider and over a century. And the sons of the harpy are no stomped out for now. But Dario, Jora, Masande, and Tyrion look on in astonishment Dude. as Drogon soars away. She rode Drogon the old-fashioned way. No saddle. In yeah. House of the Dragon, they had saddles. They were, like, chilling up there, strapped in. Yeah, whatever. she went bareback. Ooh. And spike. That's, like, dragon scale. There was spiky up there. Like, that's not comfortable can't whatsoever. can't feel great. Oh my gosh. Uh, maybe it locks her in a little more. I don't know. But, like, not a com- not a, not in a no, comfortable Certainly way. not comfortably. Um, but, no, that concludes another great episode of Game mm-hmm. of Thrones, man. Like, that was... Uh, for a, you know, since Hard Home was like the, what we typically think of as a penultimate episode, this one kind of feels like it's on the weaker side as far as comparing them there. But I still think that visually this might be my favorite episode of the season Dude. just yes. because it was so original. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shots in this that I don't feel like I could point to other spots in Game of Thrones and go, ah, it reminds me of that. No, like this is, uh, this is pretty singular and I, Won two Emmy Awards, um, one for Outstanding Single Camera Picture Editing and um, Outstanding Visual Effects. Look at that. Look at that. Makes perfect sense. And Amelia Clark's submission for Supporting Actress, um, Emmy Nom, there as well um, for this episode for nomination. Love that. But yeah, this, this one was – it felt um, visually way – like 
there was purpose for and it just just to be cool. Like they they could have just shown Jamie walking into those apartments, you know, the main apartments, whatever, just like normal, like they normally do, whatever. They didn't have to do that, but that was so cool. They didn't have to show the Alistair Thorne over the shoulder down the wall shot of John slowly separating himself from the pack, like oh my fucking Damn. god. Um yeah, no, this this episode was was beautiful. And I don't know, like every like it's weird to rank like enjoyment here because like Shireen, like there's there's just very hard things to watch, but it's like right. um I don't think that like weighs it down, you know. I don't No, think no, that, no, I don't either. Yeah. I think well last episode was a ten, uh, with Hard Home. I I d I don't know if I'm at a ten here. Enjoyment? Uh, no. Yeah. I mean I'm pretty high. Like it's a it's a viscerally emotional episode. And for that, I got to give it some credit, but I do not like no. watching most of it. Um, yeah, this will be the first penultimate that won't get a 10 on enjoyment. No shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, Walking and that's kind of no doubt, too. Crazy like, this Cassidy isn't... Mirror, Blackwater and Baylor. so, I mean... In fact, like, you know... It's a strong... Like, I do enjoy the episode, but not in any particular fashion to where I'm like, Oh man, like you gotta watch the Dance of Dragons episode. In fact, like I'd steer you away for the most part for the other reasons beyond the mm-hmm. end of this. Yeah. Um, so I mean, like I'm, I, I don't want to go too low with it. Like I'm still probably around a nine, you know, like because because it was that good, it was that well done that that mm-hmm. kind of boosts my yeah. enjoyment of it. I mean, if it was bad and did all these terrible things, I would never watch it. You know, I would never enjoy watching. I have a good time watching it, though. And yeah. uh, I think I'm there. That's what we gave episode seven um, as well. Uh, episode three of the season two got a nine. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'll give it a nine. That's cool with me. I dig. I dig, dig. Critically, though. I mean. And one of the stronger, one of the stronger episodes, I would actually argue. Um, I think it gets a bump for the visual, just the cool camera shots a little bit. Um, but it's not like, uh, I don't think it's, well, it's like not jaw dropping in any capacity. That's like, whoa, I can't believe they pulled that off. You know, like it's just, in fact, like it, it, it probably did deserve an outstanding visual effects. Not at the time. The dragon. I mean, Drogon. Drogon like, looks incredible. Like look, that's like to this day looks good. So like, Drogon that, looks incredible. The yeah. flying doesn't look fantastic. Yeah, um, I mean it, it's more of like fantasy. The background just seen like yeah, the, and you know they crazy. lean into it, and it, it does pay off. I think, um, to be sure. But yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to complain about it or anything because Drogon looks Dro- Drogon himself. Oh. Yeah, they they knew what they were doing. Which yeah. I mean, they spent the he money. holds up hard. He holds up well. Uh, mm-hmm. But, uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, what did we give last episode? 975? Mm-hmm. Probably 925, maybe 95. I think I'm there. I think if um, it didn't really seem that there was like a standout performance of the episode, which usually there is. Um, there is like someone who just takes over. I think next episode we got two that are fucking incredible. Um, and like, that are definitely like, like, Oh my God, this deserve, like, I felt like one of them deserves an award and the other one is just, I mean, just how he is. He's so fucking sick. Um, no, but but like you're right. You're right about this episode because usually it's a place where everyone was so fucking great Mm -hmm. that I have a tough time choosing. This one was like they didn't have much to chew on. Yeah. And so it, it was just, it was just weird, you know? Like it was different than the rest of the episodes. So you know what? Like 925, maybe even 9 might be a little bit more of an accurate assessment of it. We gave a 9 to The Gift, episode 7. Um how that one was made. Also, episode 3, they're they're all 9s across the board. Um tie it up. Tie it up. I don't care. I think we got we got 3 9s this season um that one will be an easy one to calculate yeah nine nine average there um nothing to complain about um but a little bit left to be desired you could say um i don't know what it would have taken um 
No, yeah, I'm never going to try and tell anybody exactly what they should have done instead unless it's just blatantly terrible. I just know that there's probably something that's that. I mean, there are better episodes of the show, you know, I've watched better episodes of the show. That's all. Um, yeah. But yeah, with that, we conclude our fifth penultimate episode of a season. Oh my gosh. Almost 50 episodes in the books. 49 um, down, baby. What a time to be alive. Um, yeah, man. Winter's blooming concludes here for, uh, for the week. And next week we will return with the season five finale. Love another finale. And finally, we're getting close to the end of the season. That excludes brand storyline altogether. Let's go. We're about, we're about to get back to it. We're about to get back to it, baby. And we're I'm so Hodor. very ready for that. Hodor's back. Um, and then the big Hodor. We have the, our Hodor prediction coming up. Um, we do. We probably got to go ahead and do that the episode before, you know. Um, our like our updated our guests. Yeah, you, you know, like what 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 are our guesses right now? You guessed thirty five. I guessed forty four, and that's okay. I think just for the singular episode. I yes, believe. yes. Um. So yeah, you, you're at thirty five. I'm at forty four. So we'll, all right, I can get with that. I can. That's get gonna with be that. fun. I don't know. I'm. I've been waiting to get back into the Hodors. Uh, but we'll get, oh, I love we'll, I miss we'll, the Hodor counter. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a kill list next episode. A good Fuck one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. yeah no, moving. I'm ready for that, baby. Um, but yeah, we've also got, we've got a fun week for you here as well. Beyond winter is blooming as we've uh, wrapped up our Scorsese spotlight, our anticipatory pod for killers of the flower moon. And we will be covering killers of the flower moon this Wednesday. And I'm so very excited for that as I have never been more excited for a movie. And I'm sure I loved it. I've already seen it by release date. So that's true. Yesterday we saw it or today we, we did. And it. actually today we're recording on it. Um, yes. Monday 11, right? Is that it? Yes. Sunday, 11. Sunday, 11, Sunday, 11. Monday we record. There we go. That's right. Yes. Yes. So yes that's yes, today. Yes. That's today. We record. We recorded today. <laughs> on Killers of the Flower Moon. The episode's on Wednesday. Um, but then also this Friday, we've got uh, the return of our comic book movie project, where we'll be discussing Iron Man. We'll be joined by KBZ Kyler Barnett, welcoming him back for the first time in six months. So happy to have him back. And uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's good. It's good. But uh, yeah, if you would, head to patreon.com slash pennybloompod where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content, all sorts of comic book reviews, book reviews, movie reviews, and the like. And uh, just just for $3 a month, you can support this podcast financially, which is huge because it costs me money, and I don't make any off of it unless it's over there. Head to Twitter, follow at pennybloompod, follow on Instagram at pennybloompodcast. Remember to leave a five-star rate and review wherever you might be listening and to stand in solidarity with Sag Aftra and their struggle against these fucking studios. Solidarity. Thank you. Solidarity. You do it far, you do it far better than I do. So, but <laughs> God damn it, I'll hear it every time. We need unity. <laughs> we need solidarity. Uh, fucking love Al Pacino. Everybody should go watch The Irishman as soon as they possibly can, mm -hmm. especially with Killers of the Flower Moon's release. Highly um, recommend. Highly recommend. Uh, we just discussed that last Friday, so go check that out. Um, yeah, but remember, stand in solidarity with SAG after they deserve everything they're asking for. Because without the actors, we would not be able to discuss the excellent stuff like Game of Thrones, like The Irishman, like Killers of the Flower Moon. I assume. Um, mm -hmm. So they deserve to be compensated for their work and to own their likeness. They cannot be replicated by a computer. They cannot and they shall not. I will not allow it. Um, just on a personal level. Um, yeah, with that, I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much. Hi. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And remember, peace, love, and bloom. And in my experience, Eloquent men are right every bit as often as imbeciles. <laughs>